Hey everybody, how's it going? Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we're going to be talking about 10 things that are hurting the coin industry. Now these are just things that I kind of compiled, made a list, and want to talk them through with you, and maybe that can encourage you to either avoid some things, or do some things differently, or just help the hobby out in the long term. I'm also curious, you know, maybe you disagree with me, but I'll just pretty much get into it. And the first thing that I see as hurting the coin industry is the telemarketers. Now, this is something that I've actually disagreed with other people about in the past. Some people say that it's good to get people collecting and have people aware that the coins are worth money when they see these ads on the TV. But in my experience, generally what happens is they're selling some sort of product that has a little bit of value. Sometimes it's really nothing, but say it's like a bullion coin, an American Silver Eagle, and it's graded MS70, which doesn't really mean a ton, and I'll get into that in a little bit, but they're selling it for way more than it's worth. So when somebody purchases it, when they go to resell it, often it's gonna be worth a lot less than what they had initially put into it. And the way that these telemarketers are marketing the coins are a little bit in the wrong kind of mentality of coin collecting. You know, it's not something where everything is bound to go up, and when you tell per people that whatever money you put into coins, you're gonna 5X, you know, five, have five times more um, in five years. That's just not a true statement. It's not a good thing to be promoting. And it's something that I see as damaging to the hobby because instead of then purchasing more coins, these people probably are just going to get angry at coins, sell their coins, and then not um, be into it in the future. Some people think that it really does get more people involved, but that's not the case for me. Along with those telemarketers, people who sell third-party repackagings like this, which I have in my hand, are probably not gonna help the hobby too much because they're just so overpriced. Now, this is something, I always think that it's pretty funny. Um, it's a tribute to Thomas Jefferson coin and stamp collection. It was given to me when I was like five or six, and I always thought, this is a super rare collection. I've never seen it anywhere with this packaging. It's gotta be worth a ton of money, but the only real collections that are gonna be worth that much are when they're from the original United States Mint. Basically, the coins in this, it's three nickels and a quarter. It's probably worth about 40 to 45 cents. Maybe if you count the 1938 coin as a 10 cent or 20 cent coin, um, you know, you might get to a dollar if you're being really optimistic. But I always thought that this was a super rare item. Come to find out that it's, you know, basically just a pocket change. However, it definitely was not sold to the person who gave it to me for 40 cents. It was probably 14.99, 19.99, something expensive. And it's just kind of a way to be predatory towards newer collectors. And again, that sort of attitude, it's never gonna help anybody. And this is something that we see a lot in the coin shop, all of these non-US government repackaged sets that make it look like there's something big, when in reality, they're just kind of adding a fancy title to some very common coins. Often those coins are also very cleaned, never really good dates. So it's, it's just really not a great way to introduce people to the coin hobby. Number three would probably be misinformation on YouTube. Um, I see this as often there's people saying that, you know, you have to look for these coins. One of those people is myself, but I try to make it very clear as to not all of them are gonna have these errors. You know, not all of them are Mint State 70. I never really get into, you know, just telling somebody that when there's no error, they should be looking for a specific coin because it's just gonna be super expensive if you can grade it. You know, there's a lot of kind of sidesteps where you can make something seem very valuable when in reality it really is not worth a ton and or or anything really i mean your average 1989 let's say penny you know if that's just a good example if you grade all of them it's highly unlikely that you're going to be making a top pop that might sell for hundreds or a few thousand i don't even know how much they're selling for but it's just a little bit misleading also saying you know look for these 1989 pennies and then you have a bunch of physical errors they're not like variety you know 88 for example 1988 there's a double deer so that would be a great one to make a video i'm sure i've done it in the past about explaining the double ear it's not on all the coins but you might be able to find it instead what some people are doing in addition to saying you know this is a 1988 coin you could get at mid state 68 and it's going to be worth a ton of money they'll also say look for these 1988 coins and then it's like a clip planchet or a fold over error or a broad struck 1988 penny I think it's a lot better and more of an honest practice to be talking about the varieties and being clear about the varieties or um, you know, telling people to, you know, making a video where it's very clear about the 
intricacies of grading coins high because I've talked to a lot of people who are upset because they thought that they would have a ton of money so they spent a lot on grading fees only to get some worthless coins back or they you know have all of these coins they're counting on money because um, they didn't watch a video um, too carefully or was misleading and they think that you know their coins in their pocket change are worth hundreds of dollars and they need that money but they're really not worth anything often that does fall on the viewer but I think that the practice of trying to you know, use these misleading ways of representing coin values is not a helpful thing for people on YouTube to be watching. There's also the practice of coin roll hunting for money. Basically, you pay like $50, then somebody hunts a few rolls of coins for you and returns you probably a lot less, whatever you find, maybe plus a bonus. Um, I've been tempted to do this in the past, but I never really got into it, and I feel like it's just important to be clear that if you send somebody the money to do this, that it's not likely to give them a good return on their investment. Uh, it's basically a gamble. Or I think the best way to view it is that they're paying for entertainment and they know that they're not going to get their money back likely, but it's just kind of a nice way to support a creator. The latter is fine, but I've had a lot of people who say, you know, I thought I was going to get a ton of silver from this. They spend $50, $100, and then they get maybe... 10 to $20 in silver coins back. Now, if the person's being upfront and honest, that's more of a support the channel as opposed to a, you know, here's a great way to get some money back, that would be helpful, but people definitely are left with a sour taste in their mouth when they receive $10 in silver after spending 50 or $100 to support one of their favorite YouTube creators. I also think that angry older collectors or just collectors in general who are pretty toxic is a bad thing for the hobby. I know that the coin forums online, I don't know what the problem is, but there's a lot of people who will go around trashing each other and getting very upset or being way too formal and just not like normal and having a good perspective on coins as something serious but not extremely serious. People, you know, really trashing. I've seen people say the worst things about other people online or getting super upset. And it's not really just um, older collectors, but I found that often there can be some levels of condescension, not towards me, I've never really experienced that, but um, where, where people are saying, you know, all these new people are ruining the hobby or new people getting into the hobby, um, you know, they're, they don't know what we know. And obviously, I'm, I'm, I'd say I'm an intermediate collector, not even advanced. There's so much to learn in the hobby. And I think that people just kind of lose perspective that this is a fun thing. Most people are not doing this um, solely or, or, you know, even mostly focused on the money aspect, myself included. Um, so, you know, just something to think about. It's important to just be friendly as new collectors, or, you know, as older collectors, when you're getting people involved in the hobby, definitely not the time to be kind of all stuck up about your knowledge or upset when they don't understand anything. Since I know that coin people, coin collectors in general, sometimes get a bad rap as being kind of strange or, you know, not exactly the types of people that others would want to hang out with and talk to. And I think that that's changing, but I think that that needs to continue to change because otherwise it'll kind of tarnish the hobby as something that people, you know, don't really enjoy doing or don't really have the camaraderie and the friendships behind. I also think that the wave of graded bullion coins and new coins that are being produced at high premiums solely for markups are kind of damaging to the hobby. Now, maybe I'm totally wrong with this, but I feel like, you know, I, I alluded to it before, Mint State 70 graded um, bullion that comes right out of the mint, then they put a first strike stamp on it. And that doesn't really mean anything because you should, probably should only have one first strike. Um, it's basically a designation that you can pay a little bit more for. And it's like one of the first that's been graded. It's not a first strike coin. Um, it's just saying, you know, these are the first, you know, 100,000 that were graded at our grading service. Um, you know, it's fine if somebody wants to pay more for that, but I feel like there's very limited collectability. It's not like that authentic of a collectability. And I think it would be different if they were making like numbered coins, like say the first hundred Silver Eagles each had an individual number for this is what's been struck or the V75 mark, that's really cool. But I don't think that producing a bunch of grades um, just on modern coinage is really going to help the hobby a ton from a long-term perspective because you know that it's when you're when there's so many different coins coming out from the mint and it's it creates a situation in my opinion where it's tough for people to catch up and purchase all of it or collect what they want to and it's very much 
artificial where the coins go straight from the mint maybe to the graders and then get sold and, and packaged as kind of a just a way to make money for the mint um, and, and potentially for the grading services. I think it would be a lot cooler if they put, you know, the W Mint Mark Quarter. I thought that that was an awesome, awesome series. Um, I think that the W, I want to say it was a W Mint Penny, like that's really neat. But I think that the best way to do this is kind of the natural way with the W Mint Quarters. It's fine if people are going through banks, bank rolls and searching for them, but releasing all of these cool coins into circulation, maybe even not detailing tons about them, but say every year they make a, a few alternate, maybe it's an alternate reverse on a quarter or on a dime or an, an alternate mint mark and just mixing them in. I don't know how much money that that would, it wouldn't certainly wouldn't make money for the mint. That's a big problem uh, involved with the whole thing. And then it wouldn't, um, you know, it might cost a little bit more to do this mixing process, so I'm not really sure, but I feel like making it more authentic collectability instead of trying to, you know, just manufacture the whole process. Um, generally, it's better when there's the authentic, you know, here's coins that are found, then it's not everything gets a, you know, 70 grade. I don't think that that's healthy either. I think it's better when there's opportunity for a few select coins that are maybe 67, 68, 68 plus as the best coins. Um, I, ju I just feel like that would be healthy for the hobby long term, um, as opposed to kind of the state that it might be towards in terms of the modern collectible stuff right at this moment. I also think that ripoff coin dealers or unfriendly coin dealers hurt the hobby because, again, I think that it's important to have a sense of trust in the community or look at coins as something that is accessible to most people. I think that there's obviously a fine line between, you know, often coin dealers are pretty stressed and have to make, you know, are making an important deal and they need to focus, but there's a lot of coin dealers that are just super unfriendly to anybody else. That's, you know, that, that's been the experience that other people have told me. Generally, coin dealers are pretty good with me, um, but it, it's just really not healthy when the kind of stigma surrounding it is that the dealers and the people involved um, might not be that friendly. I think it's also kind of, this isn't really hurting the hobby, but just something that I've noticed. It's a lot more of a private hobby, whereas like with collecting cards, I've talked to other people and also in my experience, people are a lot more open about talking about it. There's a fine line of not getting, you know, getting robbed or, you know, there's some financial risk aspect for sure and safety, but I feel like it shouldn't be something that people are super, you know, closed off about. And rather it's like a fun thing that you can collect and that you can enjoy with other people instead of just having it be a singular and, and solely the person who's purchasing uh, enjoys it. I think that social media has really helped to kind of broaden that and have people share when they're not in the physical presence of other collectors. But I think that um, just in general, a more positive atmosphere and also coin dealers stepping in and contributing to that by being open to new people and just, you know, it makes the tiniest difference for somebody to be nice or be kind of rude and brush somebody off the way that people say, phrase a sentence, that sort of thing. So I think that that's just something else to keep in mind. Not to sound like an older person or something like that. I know that there's a lot of jokes about like, oh, all the older people just say that all these screens are so addictive, but I actually agree with them that as there's more of a digital shift like video games, I don't really play any video games, but a lot of people get really involved with that. There's a lot of information and content that's so readily accessible and very entertaining where it makes it tougher to just enjoy collecting coins for the average, say, 13 year old because, you know, there's some of them out there and I think that that's great, but I feel like there's a lot more easy passive hobbies that don't require the intelligence don't require the learning, um, don't require appreciation of history. You know, there's there's a, just a lot more that's out there that's very easy to get involved with. So that's, you know, that is something that I think is going to pose a threat to the hobby long term. And going along with the societal trends for my last two points, I think that the declining importance and even usage of physical cash and coinage is not really a good thing for the coin hobby. Maybe long term, you know, people have always been interested in money, but I think as stamps, you know, they came and went, they used to be a really big stamps and coins were collected. Not the case really whatsoever anymore. Um, there's a lot of other collectibles that kind of surged and then aren't as important, but I think the ones that are culturally 
relevant are the ones that are really going to stick in the long term. I think that coins, you know, the money, it's the hobby of kings. I think it's one of the hobbies that will always stick around. But as people kind of abstract from what money really is, you know, look at Bitcoin. That's something that's totally new and has seen massive price increases. Coins have been steadily increasing, but it's not like they've been a killer asset class that's just kind of gone up leaps and bounds. There's different periods of strength and weakness in the hobby. Um, but I think that, you know, if we get to a point, like I think in China that there's, it's pretty much everything's just done from the phone. Um, I think that that would hurt coins just because coins are no longer an everyday part of our life where it's, you know, it makes sense to be interested and know a lot about them. Lastly, going along with the previous point, I think that the decreasing relevance of gold, silver, and precious metals in our daily lives will also be important. Now, I think that it's always, everybody thinks of gold and silver as the place to go. Also, Bitcoin you have to hedge against hyperinflation or as a store of value. But I feel like, you know, for people in the 70s or in the 60s, silver was commonly found in their change. In the 70s, it kind of went away, especially as the Hunt brothers, um, you know, did, did what they did in, I think it was 79 or 80. Anyways, um, there's just not the same relevance for gold and silver in our world. It's getting more and more removed from times when people actually would circulate silver coinage. Um, gold is a lot longer ago, but that was still, you know, commonly accessible, whereas now it's a very, very expensive thing. It's pretty much solely seen as an asset class, and I don't think that that necessarily bodes well for the future, um, just in the sense that I think it's, you know, there could be gold and silver values increasing, but when the coins um, have some numismatic value, I see that as more challenging to have that appreciate. I could be totally wrong, but as the collectors grow older, and there's a lot of other new collectibles as well, like sports cards, um, collectible cards, and artwork, you know, that's not really new, but the, the cards are taking off more, and I think that they might have more cultural relevance in terms of just people being super involved in sports, flipping sneakers, maybe porting that over into some of the cards, NBA, MLB, NFL, um, Pokemon, that was something that's a big part of my childhood and I think was for a lot of other people, and I kind of enjoy collecting that as just a small side hobby, but I think for a lot of people that really is their strong tie to their childhood, whereas coins doesn't quite have that connotation. So I think that you know, there's also a lot of things that are going to help the coin industry, and I'll have a video on that soon, but I, I just don't see um, th some of the trends in society, whether that be moving away from coins in our daily lives, or not understanding silver and gold's relevance, or, you know, just having other readily available things like screens and video games and, you know, TV and all, all that sort of thing. You know, that's been around for a long time, but I think that just as more and more just gets ported online, I think that coins does have potential to fade out a little bit relative to what it has been. As I said, though, there's also some good things that are kind of looking up in the hobby, and I'll be excited to share my thoughts on those with you soon. Thanks for watching the video. I encourage you to like, comment, and subscribe for more content, and get in touch with me on my website, treasuretownyt.com, Facebook, Treasure Town, Instagram, at treasuretownyt, or Twitter, at treasuretown underscore yt, and I'll look forward to seeing you on some of my future vids.